participate, participate in um, uh, in this uh, um, activity. Uh, we um, just need to let, we would like to let you know that, that we are going to record this as a proof of this activity. Uh, if, if any, we would we would like to uh, let you know that we need um, the camera uh, always on unless you uh, have some reason to close it uh, 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 off but it will be better to keep it on um okay the, the the lecture will take about 30 minutes and then we'll have about uh, 10 minutes to 15 minutes for discussion uh, and uh, uh, we will need to have a feedback after every session to um get benefits of this uh, in our um, learning uh, uh, uh profiles um, we are happy to have questions. You have um, the chat to put your questions. If I find the, the question is uh, 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 um, received from multiple uh, uh, participants, I will uh, ask Dr. Mohsen to stop to uh, answer. Otherwise, the, Dr. Mohsen will um, uh, respond to your question at the end in the discussion. Um, uh, now we will start with Dr. Mohsen. This is, uh, uh, okay, Dr. Mohsen, you can start now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Um, today's topic will be, as, as Dr. Ahmed mentioned, a uh, simplified approach to the shock patient. Uh, this is outside the ICU. I mean, it would be the initial assessment when you uh, are called for a patient and you are suspecting that he might be in, in shock. Uh, how to approach, how to think about it, and how to manage. Uh, I will start with sharing my screen. Green and I hope it works. Yes, uh, we can see your screen. Now. So um, this is the agenda of, of the session and this will be the objectives of the session as well. So by the end of this session, you should know uh, what's the definition of shock, uh, what's the pathophysiology uh, behind shock, uh, what are the types, and how you manage these types. And we'll end the session with uh, a simple case, just to summarize what uh, you should have learned in this session. Um, the definition, it's, it's something that used to know that uh, shock is hypotension and hypotension is shock. Uh, actually, shock is uh, at the level of the cell and the tissues. So any, uh, any uh, impact that will cause hypoxia and hypoperfusion at the level of the organs, this is shock. Uh, so basically it's uh, peripheral hypoperfusion state uh, caused by so many uh, impacts that we will know in the next slides. By definition, it's a life-threatening uh, event manifested by circulatory failure. So this is the importance about shock. It's life-threatening. The end result of shock is death if untreated. So that's why it's very, very important to recognize early and start management as early as possible. And the other important thing in the definition is it's reversible. So cause the death from shock is avoidable if detected early and treated uh, appropriately. Um, the pathophysiology will start with this very interesting equation that everybody should know. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, it's about the oxygen delivery. Uh, I can't remember anything in it, to be honest, but it's very important to know what are the factors that are affecting oxygen delivery to the tissues, because that's how you will differentiate what I need to do next. So if you look at the equation, it starts with the cardiac output multiplied in so many um, fixed and variable numbers. But because it's the first number multiplied to the rest of them, it has the biggest impact on oxygen delivery. Uh, I'll just simplify it for you. It's cardiac output multiplied by 1.39, which is the uh, hemoglobin carrying capacity of oxygen in the blood multiplied by the oxygen saturation. So how much percentage of this hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen? 
plus the dissolved oxygen in uh, the blood, which is determined by the partial pressure and the maximum amount dissolved in plasma. So forget about all these meanings. What you need to know is the cardiac output is the biggest number in this equation and has the biggest impact. So what does the cardiac output mean? Cardiac output by equation again is the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. So anything changing the heart rate up and down will it change the cardiac output up and down and the same for the stroke volume. The, the stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped from the heart each beat. And what are the factors affecting the stroke volume? The, the heart rate has so many factors affecting it, but to study shock, you will be more concerned about the stroke volume and what are the factors that affect the stroke volume. So to simplify this, I've divided it into three stages of the uh, hemodynamic uh, or the hemodynamics of uh, the cardiovascular system. It's the preload, the contractility, and the afterload, as you can see in this image. All these three factors, any change in any one of these will affect the stroke volume. So if, if you have a disease or a problem affecting the preload, this will make the cardiac output less, and this will make the oxygen delivery to the tissues less, and this is shock. And it's the same for the contractility and for the afterload. So now we are going to talk about the types of shock. And again, it's based on the same three factors affecting the stroke volume that can cause shock. Um, in practice, it's very, very difficult to see a patient who has a, an isolated cause of shock. It is there, but most of the times it will be multifactorial. So keep this in mind. It can be multifactorial as well. Uh, but to simplify it, I have these five types of shock. And what are the part which is most affected in the hemodynamics that when I'm investigating the patient, I know which part is affected and which part I should treat. First is the simplest one is the hypovolemic shock. Uh, the patient is dry, is dehydrated, is bleeding. So these affecting the preload of the circulation or the cardiovascular system. Next is the distributive uh, shock, which happens with the anaphylaxis, uh, allergy, neurogenic shock. This basically will cause vasoplasia. All the vessels will be dilated. This will affect the preload and the afterload. Uh, the cardiogenic shock is mainly cardiac problem, congestive heart failure, ischemia, myocarditis. Uh, this will impair the contractility and again, affect the stroke volume, affecting the cardiac output and affecting the oxygen delivery. Obstructive shock. Uh, if you can see here in the table, the, the, the effect is by positive, it's not negative. So the afterload is very, very high. There is an obstruction to the blood flow out of the heart, uh, either by compression from outside like pneumothorax or tamponade, or a blockage in the system like pulmonary embolism. Uh, the last one is very difficult to uh, clinically diagnose and it's not that common, is the dissociative shock. Uh, it means everything is optimized, but the problem is at the level of the cells, the oxygen is not dissociating properly from hemoglobin as it should. Uh, and this can happen with anemia, hypothyroidism, carbon monoxide, toxicity, and so many other reasons. So how to approach the patient? Uh, the initial call will come for you from the nurse or from a junior doctor. This patient doesn't look good. Uh, he might be hypotensive or not, but um, the presentation of shock depends on the most affected organ. So it's hypoperfusion. So one of the organs is hypoperfused, or maybe the whole body is hypoperfused. So think about any end organ in the body 
And what's the manifestation if this organ is not perfused? The brain, if the brain is not perfused, the patient will be drowsy. Um, the lungs, if the lungs are not perfused, the patient will be hypoxic. The kidney, if the kidney is not perfused, the patient will be in AKI, um, oligoric, or electrolyte imbalance, acidotic, all the functions of the kidneys will be affected. Uh, the liver, uh, whatever, any organ, you will know if this organ is hypoperfused, what the presentation of the patient should be. If it is massive shock, you will find the whole organs are failing, which we call multi-organ failure. So the initial approach for any patient with suspected shock will be A to E assessment. It's an emergency. It's an acute illness. And why you have to take it from A to E, it's because any part of the assessment protocol can cause shock or can co contribute to the outcome of shock. So the airway, if the airway is not patent, the patient will be hypoxic. And again, the organs will be hypoxic. Breathing, if the patient has difficulty in breathing, again, oxygen will be affected and the perfusion will be affected or the oxygenation will be affected and the rest of the assessment will be uh, like this. So if you face a patient with shock, hypotensive, oligoric, drowsy or whatever, don't start assessing the organ which is affected. No, take it from A to E, take it step by step and treat abnormalities as you find. Um, the next step, it's actually not the next step. This will be integrated in, in, into your A to E assessment. This is the specific parts. When you know that I'm, I'm facing a patient who is shocked, when I'm assessing from A to E, what are the things that I need to know? I need to know the fluid status because it's like a common sense or I don't want to call it a common sense. It's a, it's a common mistake that the patient is hypotensive, let's get fluids. Yeah, maybe it's the, um, it's the most common uh, cause of shock. Either it is um, hypovolemic, hemorrhagic, or maybe um, septic or whatever. Yeah, fluids can help. But just keep in your mind, it's not the case in every patient. And sometimes fluids are harmful. So when you assess, you need to answer this question. What's the fluid status of the patient? Or basically, I want to know, is he hypovolemic or not? And this is easily can be known when you examine the patient preference. Uh, have a look at his skin, if it's dry. Mucous membranes should be dry. His pulse should be weak. It should be cold preference. Um, urine output should be low. Uh, and yeah, in, if you have access to his fluid chart, you can see that he's in a negative balance or he didn't uh, receive fluids as you uh, as needed. If he's hypervolemic, you can see peripheral edema. You can see what we call wet lungs, crepitations all over. Um, the cardiac condition, again, by clinical examination, uh, if there is tachycardia, if there is gallop, if there is a new murmur, um, all these things can uh, make you think about a cardiac problem. Vasoplegia. Um, and again, we have, we have spoken about if the patient has less volume in it, which is the, the part of the venous return. If the patient has uh, arterial dilation because of shock or anaphylaxis, he should have warm preference, he should be tachycardic, he might be sweaty. Um, so when you collect all this information by the end of the assessment, you should have an idea about what, I what is the next step to do in resuscitating this patient. One of the most important things in your assessment is the collateral history. Because as I said, most of the times it will be multifactorial and sometimes, or maybe most of the times will be related to the patient background uh, or comorbidities. So be sure to know the collateral history of the patient. Uh, the escalation plan, you should know what I'm gonna do now to resuscitate the patient and what should I do next? Uh, and the main uh, aim or uh, the main uh, thing that you need to do is treat the cause. 
Um, the investigations uh, are part of the management, but they are not part of the research station. So you, you, you will use these to collect information to target the research station plan. You have the general investigation that probably will be requested for everybody in shock, full blood count, UNEs, ABG and lactate and coagulation profile. And you have a specific investigation that can help you differentiate what kind of shock I'm facing. So inflammatory markers and cultures, well bleed ACG and troponin. Um, ECHO here is part of the investigation, but in reality, ECHO is jumping more up it's like a part of your clinical assessment. Uh, it's a skill that most of the doctors who are working in an acute setting should learn. I'm not talking about an formal echo assessing the every single function of the heart. It's just a few questions and it is available in the Cox assessment. You can have it if you, if you are looking for accreditation of the BSA, uh, British Cardiothoracic uh, Society accreditation or the uh, Intensive Care Society accreditation. They, they provide a program that can give you accreditation in a focused uh, uh, cardiac assessment by ECHO. It's really, really helpful in clinical settings. You just put the probe on the patient and you will answer so many questions uh, if the patient is shocked. Like you can assess the volumic status with the ECHO. You can assess the cardiac function with the ECHO. You can assess the afterload by the ECHO and uh, execlode or uh, think about obstructive shock. So many things you can answer in few minutes at the bedside without the patient going anywhere. Um, this should be it about shock. I know it's a very, very big topic and subject, but I, as, as a title, I needed to, to make it as simple as, as I can and make it easy for you when you face a patient in ED or in the ward that somebody has called you to help and he, is, he looks shocked. What should I do? Uh, I will give an example. It's a real case that happened with me in, in the unit, uh, I think, a few months ago. Uh, this is not the real patient in the picture, uh, but this story is, is real. 60-plus um, male admitted to ICU with short breath, needing respiratory support, uh, treated as community-acquired pneumonia. Uh, he was hypoxic and really working hard, so they put him on a CPAP. In the middle of the night, one of the nurses noticed that the patient is not producing urine and he is hypotensive. She called one of the doctors and asked him, this patient came today with this and that. His urine output is very low and um, he is hypotensive. And I did a gas and his lactate is higher than before. So when you hear this, the first thing will come to your mind is, oh, this patient looks dehydrated. He's in sepsis, um, he's not producing urine, his lactate is rising and he's hypotensive. Let's give, him a, let's give him a fluid bolus and see if it works. And I believe that was done based on a telephone consultation. The patient has uh, 250 or 500 fluid challenge given and within a few minutes he arrested. Um, they resuscitated him. Um, the doctor who advised to give the fluid recognized immediately the mistake that he did. The patient is shocked and doesn't mean that he's hypovolemic. Uh, he gave him uh, a stat dose of rosemide. His oxygenation improved. He managed to have a ROSC. And by, by, the, by the morning, he was more stable. When we came next morning, the first thing we did is just put the probe on his heart and see what's doing. And he had a very severe dilated and very poor LV systolic function. So he was shocked but he wasn't hypovolemic. It was a cardiogenic shock. And if you look at the presentation, it's typically like similar to whatever shock he will have. So I should know which part of the circulation I should treat. Think about the three compartments of the hemodynamics that I've uh, spoke about, the preload, the contractility, and the afterload. Preload is mainly about volume, Contractility is mainly about cardiac function, and the afterload is about the systemic vascular resistance. When the patient is very septic or he is in anaphylaxis, he will lose the systemic vascular resistance, and this can cause shock. Uh, to summarize, again, it's 
the, the shock is mainly about its definition. It's a state of tissue hyperfusion and cause multi organ dysfunction and death if untreated. It has a variable causes and uh, can be multifactorial, affecting the, the three main com components of the hemodynamics the preload, afterload, and contractility. The management will be again, A to E assessment is really, really important. You will work in a systemic way and you will discover things uh, as early as it should. Um, the patient usually will need organ support in ICU as long as investigating and treating um, the cause. Um, I hope this was as simplified as I hoped uh, and as practical as I hoped as well. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if, uh, if you have. Um, Thank you, Dr. Jason. Thank you very much. It's very, 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 it's very good. I actually uh, learned a lot of, of things that um, yes, organized my mind regarding the patient with shock. Uh, thank you very much. This is very, very interesting um, lecture. Um, uh, now we can receive any question from the attendants. Um, anyone have a question? Hello. Just wanted to say it was very informative and honestly, it made things clear. Thanks. No question from my side. Thanks, Thanks Roy. Um, as a surgeon, I will ask a question myself, maybe, <laughs> because we are yeah, surgeons, sure. we are using your, your terms a lot. So we all, all, always know A, B, C. What is D and E? Um, a and E is, is the same, like uh, A, B, C, but it's, it starts with A, B, C, B, but extending. So A... We know A, B, e, C, but what D and E? Okay. D <laughs> is, is, is usually the disability, and this is, will be the CNS assessment. So we'll assess oh, yeah. the GCS of the patient, any neurological yeah. deficit, and for you as a surgeon, put pain in it. Uh, yeah. So it's a CNS and pain. Uh, it's not made for shock. It's made for any acute illness. And it, it's made in a way to treat the most uh, important parts first. You have yes. few seconds to treat the airway. You have few minutes to treat the breathing you have minutes to hours to stabilize the cardiovascular and then the disability and everything else comes late. E is everything else. Um, yeah. you, can, you can put a formal E based on your speciality. So for us in ICU, we use E as investigating or examining the GI, renal, skin, uh, infect, infection, I mean, antibiotics and markers um sedation analgesia and everything else that you need to to assess uh, it's yes, not interesting yeah the most yeah, important is a b c yes <laughs> this is it is. A, well, whatever the patient is acutely ill poor the patient is hypoxic the patient is drowsy the patient is in seizures or whatever use a yeah. B, and treat abnormalities as uh, as you find okay uh, I would like to highlight something. Uh, actually, everyone who is presenting should um, introduce himself first, uh, his full name and his um, uh, role and his uh, hospital. Uh, can you do this, uh, Dr. Mokson, now? Because you should do it at the first slide. I know. Because we Just that know. that everybody knows everybody, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay. My name is uh, Mokson Abdel Al. I'm a specialty doctor in intensive care at Langshar Teaching. Uh, hostels uh, in Preston and Chorley. I've been there for three years now. Um, teaching is one of the things, as everybody knows, needed for your appraisal and your training, uh, your Caesar pathway, whatever the pathway you're using, teaching is is needed. And this is the aim of, of uh, organizing these sessions. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody has any questions, um, any comments? Mahmoud is hiding behind the screen. He told me he will be eating, so I'm just apologizing instead of him. Um, Abdullah didn't join, I don't know. Um, maybe he's late in, in clinic. Uh, I'll just, uh, we have a few minutes, so I will just explain what we should do from now on and forward. 
the session should be short as as possible, like 30 minutes or or, or less. Uh, the, the most important thing is the feedback. Uh, I've arranged the feedback forms already. It will be distributed by the organizer. Um, okay, well, we have 10 minutes left for the session, the Zoom just telling me. So the feedback yeah. will be distributed after the session. It's uh, just a simple form uh, that you need to, to fill uh, for yes, the presenter yeah. and for the organizer. Uh, I will leave this to explain further for uh, with Dr. Ahmed. Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, we need this um, feedback form to um, improve the sessions and also uh, improve ourselves in, in terms of teaching, know what is um, uh, good points, what is the um, point that needs to improve. It will help ourselves and uh, will be a good uh, um, good thing for every one of us, either the, um, the attendants or the, uh, the lecturer. Okay, um, uh, for now, we, the, now it, it, it finished. We uh, will announce the next lecture um, next week, I think. Uh, everything will be uh, announced on WhatsApp group. Um, thank you, everybody, and um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Thanks, Dr. Rahman, and thanks, Roya, for your interactivity. Thanks, Mahmoud, for listening, if you are listening. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week. Uh, at the same time, and as Dr. Ahmed said, uh, we will announce this on, on the group. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.